So this past Sunday, Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and a few other people on a helicopter crashed and they passed away. And I wanted to send out a short tribute video. And as we mourn the loss of Kobe, his daughter, the families, all those involved, and we pray for them, I just want to share a little bit of reflection that I've been thinking about because I was really touched by this. You know, he was 41 years old. He had four kids. He had one daughter who was just seven months old. So I could really relate in that regard to having um, a lot of little kids and a young family. And in addition to being an amazing basketball player, I see a serious story and testimony to conversion in how something so bad in someone's life can actually lead them, can be used to lead them closer to God. And we don't justify or excuse the sin, but if we are Christian, then we do believe in repentance and we believe in second chances and believe in God's grace and mercy to heal and forgive. And that's how I look at it. I forgive him for that terrible act. And I believe that I'm no better. You know, I look around and um, I see these great pastors or leaders or um, athletes or Hollywood movie stars. And I see these awful falls and terrible acts that they commit and and often get accused and go to jail and pay the penalty for them as they should but I don't think I'm any better and I, I think of the story of Philip Neri and how when he was with his buddy in Italy this great saint saw a criminal being escorted to jail and Philip Neri says to his friend he said there goes Philip Neri but for the grace of God here go I and that's the way I see it I mean I could totally be falling like so many of the people that we look up to but by the grace of God and by his strength in me nothing that I've done nothing that I've earned but here by the grace of God here go I um, and that's the way I look at it but Kobe Bryant he changed his life after this and he went through a lot of heartaches and hardships and even after this his wife filed for divorce and he didn't accept it but he turned to his faith that he was raised in and he started meeting with a priest and consulting with a priest and he started growing closer to God and he, he ended up um, reconciling with his wife and building that marriage. And then he says of God and understanding God that we can't understand God until we have that cross that we can't carry on our own. And then God lifts us along with that cross. And that's how he began to understand God. And I thought that was a really powerful ex example considering all he went through and considering the platform that he had to talk about his faith and to even live his faith and to have four kids and to fight for his marriage and to practice his faith. I mean, he was seen at daily mass in LA and on the day that he died, um, his daughter had a basketball game, but that didn't mean he didn't go to church. He went to church at 7 a.m. that morning. And that just shows how important the faith was to him in his life. And I truly believe that he had a strong and powerful conversion he was an amazing witness towards the end of his life. And he was truly a beast for Christ and lived out fierce holiness. So when we look back on Kobe's life, I hope we don't just see the great amazing basketball player or the guy who was accused of sexual assault and had an affair on his wife or the guy whose wife almost divorced him. But I hope we see a story of conversion and of repentance and of lifting up his cross in turning it over to God and growing closer to him through the hardships because we all face them and he was such an inspiration on the court but I believe he can be an inspiration off the court as well.